Hi everyone, this is part one of our two-part tutorial for physics constraint types. Here we're going to cover hinge, slider, and spring constraints. First up, we're going to use the hinge constraint on these gears here to make them work together. As you can see, the gear marked with the K is assigned a kinematic physics property, while the one marked with the D has been assigned with dynamic physics. I'm also going to open up the timeline here to show you that the kinematic gear has already been animated with a spinning cycle, as you can see with the keyframes in the transform track. Also, notice that there is no pre-existing animation in the dynamic gear's transform track, and honestly you won't normally want to do that with dynamic physics props anyways, as they'll react naturally to the environment. Anyways, I'll go ahead and play this back, and you'll see the kinematic gear spin around, but the dynamic gear won't do anything. This is because we don't have rigid body simulation on yet, so let's go and switch that on. Now, notice my dynamic gear will just fall like dynamic objects normally do. So let's go ahead and put a hinge constraint on it. We'll just leave the target at world, but what I do need to do is go down to set the limits to free. This way there will be no lock on the hinge constraint and it will be able to rotate 360 degrees. So, let's play back. You'll notice that my gear is rotating on the x-axis, indicated by the red arrow. Note again that I'm currently using the local axis, which is recommended when you're using constraints. I'll demonstrate an example later using the world axis and show why it's a bit more difficult. You can swap between local and world axes quickly by using the W hotkey. If I move on to the y axis, you'll now see that my gear will rotate around that axis, indicated by the green arrow. Finally, I'll switch to the z-axis, which will demonstrate the correct result according to my prop's local axis. Okay, so now check out this animation of Chuck lifting this small cabinet. Can you guess which part I want to apply my physics constraint to? You can see the two keyframe animation I have on the cabinet that's lifting it up here in the timeline as well. With this as a kinematic object, and the drawer as dynamic, I can make a cool drawer sliding animation. Okay, time to give the drawer some dynamic physics properties. You'll see the drawer will fall right away, so let's assign a constraint. I'll assign a slider constraint here first. You'll see that when I play back my animation that the drawer will remain in place. In order to give the drawer some sliding movement, I first need to increase the slider range here. Now you can see that the x-axis is the only option for slider constraints, so I need to ensure my local axis is facing the direction that I want the slide to go in. So next, I want to extend the slider range to about 50. You'll see when I play back now that the drawer still won't close. So what's the problem? Well, I'll need to choose the cabinet as a target first, so the drawer will follow its movement and rotation. Once I do that, you can see in the playback, the drawer will now slide about half a grid length down its x-axis and jerk to a stop. I can fill up the rest of the cabinet with the other drawers easily by holding down the control key and then click dragging along the vertical axis here to create two more copies. Note that these other drawers will retain all the physics and constraint data from the original. Now when I play back a final time, you'll see that all the drawers will slide forward while the lower one will stop once it hits the ground. Okay, now on to the final constraint type for this tutorial, the spring. This one can be a bit more complicated because there are a larger number of specifications for this restraint. You can see here that I have a toaster with a number of different separate components, such as the lever and two pieces of toast inside. I can select them individually from the content manager on the left. So let's assign some physics to my toast. I'll make sure they're both selected by control clicking in the content manager, and then assign a dynamic state. Next what I'll do is go find my lever in the content manager, and assign that with a dynamic state as well. Now when I play back, everything will naturally drop into infinity, because they have dynamic states but no constraints. So let's go to my pieces of toast and give them some spring constraints. Now of course when I play back initially, nothing will move because I haven't set limits at all. So I'll adjust the values here. 
Now the values are especially important for spring constraints, because here I want to create some initial movement without an external force. First, I'll set a minimum and maximum value, and then the rest point. Now remember, the world axis is currently on, so the gizmo shows the z-axis pointing upwards. However, I'm adjusting the y value on my toast here, because although you can't see it at the moment, that's the direction of my toast's local y axis. The rest point is where the toast will eventually come to rest. If this is a different value from zero, the object will automatically spring forward to reach that point, and eventually settle down there depending on the spring value. You can see here that it bounces quite a bit because of two things. The first is the spring value, which is actually only at 100 here. If I put the spring value to 500, the power will be even stronger. So, in order to get the toast to come to a stop sooner, I need to adjust the damping value. I'll put it up to 90, and you can see immediately the spring movement stops a lot earlier, but maybe not early enough. I'll put it up to 95 and try again. If I want even more restriction on the movement, I can go into the external physics damping settings for that object as well. I'll set that up a bit higher here and try again. Well, that's a little better, but maybe I want to decrease the spring strength a bit more. I'll do that and try one more time. That's a bit better. Next, I'll do the same thing with the lever. Always remember to pay attention to the pivot point of each individual prop, as every one will be different. Here is the final result. Okay, so springs also have a rotation setting, which acts similar to a hinge, just with more bounce. Here you can see I have someone throwing a barrel out of a saloon but of course it's just passing through the doors because they haven't been assigned physics settings yet. Notice that when I change to local axis mode that the x-axis is placed vertically along the side frame of the doorway. This is because the spring rotation value will rotate around the x-axis only, much like the slider value. So what I'll do is choose them both, and then assign them both dynamic physics. But again, of course, I'll need to constrain them. So I'm going to add in my spring constraint, and you'll be able to see that when I play back, my doors will just kind of spring into place. This is because there is no rotation on them, so I'll go down and toggle the rotation on, and then enter some values in the minimum and maximum fields. Let's go with negative and positive 90 degrees. Now when the barrel bursts through, you'll see the doors swing outwards and spring back just like a real pair of saloon doors would. Now what if one of the doors was on its last leg and was about to fall off? Well, let's toggle the breakable option on with that door. You'll see that the door will almost begin falling before the barrel even hits it. This is because I left the value at a really weak setting. Let's put it up to 10 this time. You'll see that the door will remain in place, but will be broken off when the barrel makes contact. Now, if I extend the range of my rotation to 180 degrees on that same door, and disable the breakable option, you'll see that when the barrel strikes, the door will swing 360 once due to the momentum from the original contact. That's about it for part one of constraints. Make sure you check out part two for point-to-point, -point, rope, and cone twist constraints.